just after lunch. So my job is to keep everyone awake. Not just for this session, but for the next few hours. That's what she told me. I'll try my best. I'm Kishan Agrawal. I'm the Vice President of Technology for Oracle Application Labs. I'm responsible for technology, infrastructure, and systems for all our internal corporate system. And one of my role or responsibility as of now is to lead the journey of all our internal systems, both apps and infrastructure to cloud. In this session, I'm going to talk about, as Ricardo said, our own transformation, our own journey to cloud. I'll touch upon a little bit on the application side, but my main focus would be the infrastructure transformation. Why we did it, how we did it, and what we benefited by that. Let's start with a bit of introduction about our organization, Oracle Application Labs. We are part of product engineering group, and we have three charters. First, we run all the applications, all the business application that runs Oracle. We implement, we customize, we extend, we manage all corporate system. Second, we are the early adapter for almost all our products so that we can provide feedback to product engineering as well as we can find issues before our customers find those issues. And finally, in sessions like this, we share our own learning, best practices with our customers. With that, let's talk about transformation. In last 10 or 15 years, Oracle's IT group has seen two major transformation. The first one, some of you might have already heard about it, it was in early 2000, when Oracle used to have all this regional country specific ERP and systems, and we consolidated all of those in one global single instance. That not only allowed the infrastructure consolidation and modernization, but also we were able to have one global simplified standard processes. The way we hire, the way we run supply chain, the way we run our CRM system, we have one global single instance. And that led to over a billion dollar savings for all. In addition, the single instance also built the foundation for the next almost 150 acquisition that Oracle did over the last 10 years. Now, we are in the midst of similar but yet more significant transformation as we move all of our internal systems, both apps and infrastructure, to cloud. Our vision is to become 100% cloud-only IT organization. We leverage both the infrastructure services as well as all the application services to run all our applications, whether it's supply chain, whether it's global HR, whether it's global finance. We are already running almost all of our core businesses in Oracle cloud applications and cloud infrastructure. So why did we do that? Why we started on this journey of moving everything to cloud a few years back. Let's first talk about why we did it in applications. As Oracle transformed itself from a product company to a service company, we had to provide exceptional experience to our employees, our customers, and our suppliers and all other stakeholders, as well as we have to keep pace with the changes that is happening in the company. Earlier, we were running everything on-prem, running eBusiness Suite and other legacy applications. 
and the adoption cycle was almost five years. The last upgrade we did was 2009-2010. And there will be a separate cycle for technical upgrades. We need to take uh, critical patches, other new features update. In the technical side, it will be another update cycle. And then any enhancements or features that our business would need will have a long wait time. What that would result in is a, a lot of in-house custom development. We would have hundreds of people doing extensions, custom applications built on top of e-business suite or outside of e-business suite. Since then, we decided to move to Oracle Cloud applications where we get it's no longer called upgrade, we get updates. Every quarter, we get hundreds of new features, and these are all delivered as opt-in, opt-out. You don't have to take any of those features. You decide what features you want to take, so you, based on your business requirement and need, you enable the features that you want. This also brings technological updates like AI and ML capabilities, the bot capabilities and IoT capabilities. So when your application get updates, it gets those technical capabilities as well. And then we, we are able to provide an immediate feedback loop to product engineering. That's on the app side. Let's talk about the infrastructure. When we were running on-prem, we would do this yearly capital expenditure budget. I think it's no different from any other organization in the world. And then that will set us our budget for the year and we'll have a little bit of flexibility on how much less we can buy above or below that. Then we will have quarterly maintenance for our infrastructure. This used to be 48 hours every quarter. Everything has to be shut down because there'll be memory upgrade, hardware upgrade, some power circuit needs to be replaced and all. And then we'll have fixed capacity. Okay, we will have this three rack servers for HR system, three racks or three servers allocated for CRM system. So we'll have fixed allocated capacity for these servers and limited flexibility on how we reallocate resources. Provisioning was manual. Let's say the business apps, the HR business decides to roll out a new application. From that day to the day when we'll be able to deploy the application will be months because the procurement process, the hardware will get shipped, then we have to configure the hardware, set up the OS, then on top of this set up all the software stack and all. And finally, with our limited and constrained high, avail high availability capabilities in the on-prem system, we would have frequent and long outages. I can tell you in a global single instance, we used to have 10 to 12 hours of outage almost every weekend. It could be for application patching, it could be for database upgrade or some underlying hardware update. We will always have those outages. So with, at this point, moving to cloud or Oracle cloud infrastructure was an obvious and logical choice for us. As we move, we are able to have very flexible need-based budgeting. As we increase our capacity, we need 100 more CPUs. We can just go and subscribe for more capacity. For many of the services, they are self-patching, so we don't have to have those quarterly maintenance. And if we have to patch ourselves, many of the services, we can do hot patching. So we no longer have those quarterly updates. The capacity is very elastic. During financial year end and month end, we can reallocate additional CPUs for our financial system. And then during payroll run, we allocate more hardware and capacity to our HR system. Provisioning is API-based automated provisioning. So we can provision a new system in minutes, not months and months. And finally, for some of our very mission critical system, like for example, the console that you go to see some or to run some of your subscription or services, those needs to have 100% or almost 100% uptime. So we are able to do that. The five nine uptime, which is almost like two minutes outage or three minutes outage in a year, we are able to achieve that with Oracle Cloud infrastructure capabilities. It's multi-region, multi-AD, fault domain, all those. I'm not going to cover all the OCR features, but 
those are the things that has enabled us to achieve the five nines of time. Now let's talk about some of the unique capabilities. I'm sure there are other sessions where you'll hear a lot more about the capabilities, but I want to touch upon a few which were very unique for us or, and help us become less operation-oriented organization and more focus on innovation. First, of course, is autonomous. Second, most significant is the always on security. With its edge-to-edge -edge or core-to-edge isolation, end-to-end -end encryption, and a lot of out-of-box secure security configuration and solution, we don't have to become like network specialist or security specialist anymore. When we were deploying the services on-prem, we need to make sure we have a very secure firewall, the hardware is configured, we have all the threat detection services up installed, all those things we used to do. Now, when we deploy services to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, we don't need to become a specialist anymore. There are ready-made solutions. Third key aspect for us was the built-in telemetry. Every service or every tip, every service that we provision or use in OCI, it comes with its built-in telemetry, which we are able to integrate with our existing monitoring systems. And then some of these services also has auto-healing capabilities. When something goes wrong, it automatically fixes itself and restarts or reprovision as needed. And finally, as many of you, or almost all of you know about continuous delivery. We, at Oracle, we used to practice continuous delivery for a while. But it was always at the apps layer or the software layer. You know, you build an application, you have Java program, you do all those continuous delivery pipeline and all those things. But when it comes to infrastructure, it has always been the traditional, you know, build document that you give the, the document to the ops team, they will build the servers and all. For the very first time, we are able to have true continuous delivery in our organization, where how we provision a server, how we provision a service or the platform component on top of that, then how we deploy application from the very bottom of the stack to the top of the stack. We are able to do that in a pure CI CD model. So I talked about why, like why we moved to OCI, right, or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure with all these capabilities. Let's now, now talk about how we moved it. Now I'll spend next few slides on what was our approach. When we looked at our footprint, we saw there were like various kinds of application or workload deployed in our on-prem infrastructure. First was cloud native. This is where we looked at our application and we say we should refactor it or we were going to build something from scratch. In those cases, we deployed or built that application directly in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure using all the cloud native capabilities. Then we had a significant footprint of applications which were already using Oracle platform products like Oracle Database, Oracle Middleware. So as part of the migration, we decided to go to the latest and greatest version of those platform services. Like when we moved the database from on-prem, say Oracle 12C, we moved directly to autonomous. Similarly for Java, WebLogic, uh, integration services, SOA, we moved as part of the migration, we upgraded to the latest version. Yes, this resulted in some rework for us because some component you cannot just take as it is from the existing version and put it in the new version, but we decided to go that route so that we can uptake the newer capabilities in the newer services. And finally, we had a significant chunk of applications which were more like maintenance mode or which were running on hardware, which the hardware were getting out of warranty or something. Or application where we did not want to invest anymore, these were the legacy applications. Those, we were able to do simple lift and shift. 
starting from the network layers to all the way to the software, <coughs> the platform stack, we just simply did a pure lift and shift to cloud. Now, we, we had a significant footprint on-prem, so we didn't want to do a big bang. So our approach was phase. First, we wanted to build a foundation, then focus on what are the ways we can deliver immediate values to our business, because if you 